French fry when you pizza, you're gonna have a bad time. Not all fast food French fries are created equal. Many would argue that McDonald's French fries are the best, but whose are the worst? Here's a look at the top 10 worst fast food French fries. Arby's Curly Fries but I only like the fries here. It's a question that has plagued inquiring minds for decades. Who exactly is keeping Arby's in business? Many people think the restaurant chain is subpar, and you'd be hard-pressed to find anyone who's a fan of their curly fries. Even dipping them in horsey sauce doesn't improve the taste. To make matters worse, Arby's crinkle-cut fries aren't much better. Arby's fries really seem like they're trying too hard. They look different and are very unique, but that doesn't mean they're good. But think about it, who else has bright orange curly fries? Taste is all that matters in the highly competitive fast food game, and some might say that Arby's fries are all flash and no substance. The curly fries at Arby's have another serious problem, inconsistency. They're either too crispy or too soft. McDonald's fries are always perfect wherever you go in the world, but Arby's is all over the map. Okay, maybe it's not fair to compare Arby's to McDonald's. McDonald's fries are the top of most people's list, after all. White Castle French Fries I'm enjoying a White Castle burger. Why? Because I don't do drugs. Harold and Kumar may love White Castle sliders, but their fries are another story. They're almost always bland, flavorless, soggy, and limp. Crispy White Castle fries are rarer than a bad Marvel movie. White Castle's crinkle-cut fries are usually lacking one key ingredient, salt. It seems every White Castle employee skimps on the stuff. There has to be a secret room at every White Castle where they store all that unused salt. Anything, anything but Reiki, of course. Recently, Reddit users noticed a change in White Castle's fries. One user proclaimed that they actually got worse. Can you believe it? How is that even possible? You'll have to drink a lot of cherry Cokes to wash the taste of the White Castle fries out of your mouth. So unless you're Harold and Kumar, you should probably just skip White Castle altogether. Dairy Queen French Fries Texas has a completely different menu. It's crazy out there. Even dipping Dairy Queen fries in an Oreo blizzard won't make them taste much better. We don't want to offend Dairy Queen majority shareholder Warren Buffett, but the fries at DQ are absolutely awful. DQ has delicious cold treats, but the hot eats just don't make the grade. The fries at Dairy Queen never seem to be cooked properly. They lack any crunch whatsoever, and they're usually soggy and limp. It's almost like you're eating mashed potatoes instead of fries. If the fries aren't undercooked, they're usually overcooked and are as hard as a rock. Dairy Queen can never seem to get their fries just right. One Reddit user even said that Dairy Queen fries look, feel, and taste like plastic. That sounds absolutely disgusting. If you somehow find yourself craving something hot and tasty from DQ, you're probably much better off ordering the onion rings or the pretzel sticks. Those usually aren't stale like the fries. Many people complain that DQ doesn't make their fries often enough. Sometimes they just sit there under the heat lamp waiting for an unsuspecting customer to scoop them up. First time here? Well, become an official Babble Topper by taking a quick second to hit that subscribe button. Now, more underwhelming fries. Raising Cane's Crinkle Cut Fries Your french fries drowning now. Raising Cane's has been on fire lately. The chain is so popular that it's hot on the tail of Chick-fil-A. The drive through lanes at Raising Cane's are so packed that even SNL took notice and spoofed the ridiculously long lines. No one can deny that Cane's chicken tenders are top-notch, but the fries are extremely lackluster. Even the famous Cane's sauce can't save them. The fries at Raising Cane's are just plain sad, usually soggy and bland. The chicken tenders are salted perfectly, but the fries are in serious need of some extra sodium. Well, theirs was a lot fresher than what Bill saved up, but yeah, this is what they sold. Thankfully, Raising Cane's Texas Toast is phenomenal, so you'll still be able to get your carb fix when you toss those Cane's fries to the side. Even the seagulls in the Cane's parking lot wouldn't touch such inferior fries. You would think that Raising Cane's would have excellent fries considering they're made from grade A Idaho potatoes. But unfortunately, that's not the case. Even the best ingredients don't mean a thing if you can't use them properly. In-N-Out French Fries 
one of them happens to be another man's fries. Even when they're served up animal style, In-N-Out fries are just plain bad. The burgers at In-N-Out are on point. Many would even argue that In-N-Out burgers are the best fast food burgers out there. Anthony Bourdain even said that In-N-Out was the only good fast food restaurant. People are always praising the burgers, and few restaurant chains can compete with In-N-Out when it comes to burgers. Nothing beats a double-double. However, you never hear anyone hyping up the fries and claiming they're the best. So why are In-N-Out fries so weak? Well, it comes down to the cooking method. In-N-Out only deep fries the potatoes once. That's why the fries are never crispy. To get that signature crunch that so many other fast food joints have, you need to double deep fry those potatoes. Don't panic just yet, folks. There is hope for In-N-Out fries. If you order them well done, the fries come out much, much crispier. Don't forget this secret menu hack the next time you visit In-N-Out. Shake Shack Crinkle Cut Fries Get some fries while I'm here. If you've ever had Shake Shack's cheese fries, you know just how sad Shake Shack fries are. The crinkle cut fries on their own are mushy and devoid of any flavor, but adding cheese somehow makes them worse. The cheese that Shake Shack puts on its fries is quite possibly the worst in the world. It's a gooey, pale orange nacho cheese that tastes horrendous. How can Shake Shack have such amazing burgers yet have terrible fries? It's a mystery that even Sherlock couldn't solve. Even without the cheese, Shake Shack's fries are incredibly subpar. Aside from being mushy, they're way too greasy. There's more grease on Shake Shack fries than in an 80s high school cafeteria. People line up around the block in New York City for a taste of Shake Shack, but it's for the burgers. If Shake Shack only served fries, the restaurant would have gone out of business a long time ago. If you've ever had Shake Shack fries that weren't completely cooked through, you're not alone. It's a common complaint on both Yelp and Reddit. There's another reason why Shake Shack fries are so unappetizing. They're frozen. Yes, Shake Shack doesn't even serve fresh fries. Just about everything else on the menu is fresh, so why not the fries? Fresh cut fries would be quite an improvement and make Shake Shack much more popular. Are you listening, Shake Shack? Chick-fil-A Waffle Fries Delicious waffles! Should we try? This might ruffle a few feathers, but Chick-fil-A waffle fries are some of the worst fast food fries being served. Some folks absolutely love them, but others think they're nasty. Even dipping them in garden herb ranch, sweet and spicy sriracha, or zesty buffalo sauce doesn't make them any better. Without any sauce, the waffle fries might just be the blandest fries out there. Chick-fil-A has phenomenal wow. chicken sandwiches and extremely friendly employees, but the fries don't meet Chick-fil-A's high standards. Take it all in, Fez. This is what success looks like. Most awful fast food french fries are too soggy and soft, and Chick-fil-A's waffle fries have the exact same problem. They're often way too mushy. On the other hand, sometimes they're so crispy that they poke Ouch. the top of your mouth. The nuggets at Chick-fil-A are always the perfect texture, but the fries are simply too hard or too soft. Chick-fil-A actually used to allow customers to order the waffle fries well done. Well done waffle fries are simply way too crispy, but hey, some people like them like that. Think about this. If waffle fries are so great, why don't any of the major franchises sell them? Carl's Jr. and Hardee's Fries I want my chips. The names may be different, but the restaurants are almost identical. On the West Coast, it's Carl's Jr., but on the East Coast, it's Hardee's. The burgers are pretty much the same, and so are the fries. It doesn't matter if you're in Los Angeles or Tallahassee, you're going to have a bad time if you order fries from this restaurant chain. Both Carl's Jr. and Hardee's have terrible fries. Are the fries at Carl's Jr. going to be cold? It's very likely. Are they going to be soggy? Probably. Will they skimp on the salt? That's very likely, too. Carl's Jr. has delectable burgers. That's never been in question. However, the fries just aren't as tasty as the burgers. Remember the iconic Monster Thick Burger? That was a beast of a burger that everyone wanted, despite it being so unhealthy. Today, you can get yummy burgers like the California Classic Double Cheeseburger or the Jalapeno Double Cheeseburger. Carl's Jr. really needs to make the fries as good as their burgers. If you don't like skin on your fries, then you're really going to hate the french fries at Carl's Jr. 
Many people can't stand that pesky potato skin. Carl's Jr. thinks it's okay to leave the skin on when making french fries, calling them natural cut french fries. But in reality, they're naturally inedible. Skin on fries isn't inherently bad. Five Guys and Wendy's leave skin on their fries and they're incredibly tasty. Some folks prefer french fries this way, but you'll be able to find plenty of people who prefer their fries completely peeled. Most fast food restaurants agree that potatoes should be peeled before being turned into fries. Let's be honest, even if Carl's Jr. introduced peeled fries, they would still be awful. Johnny Rockets French Fries uh, you put french fries on the cheeseburger. Johnny Rockets doesn't really do anything right. Anthony Bourdain famously hated the old-fashioned burger chain. He once tweeted, If there's a real Mr. Rockets, I'd like to hurt him. That's pretty harsh, but he wasn't wrong. Let's face it, the chain's 50s-themed nostalgia is boring, and the singing waiters are annoying. Most people just want to eat a burger and drink a milkshake in peace. No one needs an off-key Paul Anka wannabe crooning in their ear while chowing down. Johnny Rockets wants to be Arnold's drive-in from Happy Days, but it's really just a pale imitation. It doesn't really matter what you order at Johnny Rockets, you're likely to be disappointed. Unfortunately, no one will ever take you seriously. The burgers are bland, but the fries are even worse. Johnny Rockets makes its fries with the skin on, so that's strike one if you hate that. They're usually too salty and oftentimes limp and soggy. The worst thing, though, is the variety of toppings. Adding heaps of chili and cheese doesn't automatically make fries better. In fact, it usually makes the fries even soggier. Johnny Rockets really goes overboard with specialty fries. They have everything from home-style chili cheese fries to bacon cheese fries to plain old cheese fries. All of them are way too heavy and not very tasty. If you somehow find yourself at Johnny Rockets and you're in need of a spud fix, you're probably better off ordering the tater. Tots. They're not great, but not quite as bad as the french fries. Jolly Bee French Fries Might more take me some of potatoes home with me. Nobody goes to Jolly Bee for the fries, so maybe it doesn't matter that this iconic Filipino fast food chain has terrible spuds. No, they're not just run of the mill bad, they're truly awful. Jolly Bee also has the tendency to experiment when it comes to their fries, and the experiments always fail. Even Dr. Bunsen Honeydew and Beaker have more success in the lab. Jolly Bee knocks it out of the park when it comes to crispy chicken and spaghetti, but the fries are quite unpalatable. Jolly Bee fries are often soggy and stale. They lack any discernible flavor and are incredibly bland. You guys are making me nauseous. Would you expect anything else from the chain that came up with the questionable idea of strawberry and chocolate flavored fries? Even Jollibee's short-lived double cheese fries weren't very good. Jollibee has even tried to spice up their fries with sour cream flavoring, but nothing seems to work. Thankfully, the Chicken Joy is absolutely perfect and quite possibly the best fast food fried chicken out there. Jollibee has also tried its hand at criss cut fries in flavors like Savy Barbecue and Zesty Cheese. The criss cut fries seem to be quite a bit more popular than Jollibee's regular fries, but they're still not that impressive. While most of Jollibee's items are out of this world and absolutely irresistible, you may want to skip the fries. Order up more great videos. Just tap or click and hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to join our notification squad.